your boy Code99 and welcome back to my channel. Uh, so on today's episode of Conversation, we'll be discussing an interesting topic about insecurities, how to deal with them, what they are, how to overcome them and so on. But I have my two lovely people here. They are actually siblings. It's so nice to have them here. Um, I have Kemal and Leila. So you know, welcome them. <laughs> welcome them to the channel. What's up, so, guys? Thank you for having us. Thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Yes. Yeah. I believe so. I believe so. Thank you guys for coming. Awesome. So, like, generally, I think, um, talking about insecurities, right, I think sometimes we may uh, misinterpret or put flaws or weaknesses in places of insecurities. Sometimes they can be intertwined. Sometimes they are separate. So because this discussion you know, is for us to learn from each other, so I'd like to know your take on what exactly, what do you think insecurities are? Like isolating insecurities alone, what do you think? Anyone can go first. Well, I think like an insecurity is quite different to a weakness because mm -hmm. I feel like, okay, a weakness is something that you you acknowledge that you're not really good at, mm -hmm. but then um, maybe it, it's not something that's you know the big something that you dwell on mm -hmm. whereas i think with insecurities people often have like uh like it's something that they're sh they're sh ashamed of or mm -hmm. they're publicly ashamed to say that they're bad at or something uh -huh. something mm -hmm. something i guess a part of you that you feel makes you uncomfortable and mm -hmm. you might believe that that is something that other people also see mm -hmm. that you probably probably in their eyes is also something that they don't like and yeah. it causes anxiety. It could yeah. be anxiety in your relationship, in mm -hmm. your everyday life. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think the insecurity side is where people try to sort of cover it up mm -hmm. and are ashamed of it in yeah. a sense, right? Yeah. So and sometimes like I think like people with insecurities is like it's all up in the mind, right? right. right. And we sort of think people are seeing that or people are thinking that but Sometimes people don't even care <laughs> about it. They don't even care. It's the so, power of the mind. Yeah, exactly. yeah, bro. I, I, I feel you. Sweet. I think sometimes mm -hmm. people actually point it out to the public and then everyone realizes, oh, okay, I only realize now. But then yes. now that you put it out into the public, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think people start noticing it. But before, it wasn't even something that they saw, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's true. That's, That's what true. I think is that is that immediate perception of what you believe is perfect. Mm -hmm. For example, it could be the perfect smile mm -hmm. or body figures. You True. Know? Um, if you have a certain perception of what you believe is perfect and you feel that you do not fit that portfolio, that True. description, then you might find that as an insecurity. Yes. And that's why it's the power of the mind, right? Oh, bro. Uh, deep. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's the all in the head. The <laughs> it's really true, about true. Time, man. true. And sometimes I, I also think it may not be in the head, mm -hmm. it may be actually something real. Like, for instance, someone who is. Uh, who is on a wheelchair who cannot help themselves right. with um you know that's a real situation for that person yeah. sometimes it's what people say to you i guess to you as well so sometimes it could be as real as possible but i guess we'll dive into that um yeah. actually around. actually mm -hmm. when you put that out this mm -hmm. these type of things could probably stem from childhood Exactly. I think insecurities might stem from childhood. So it could be as simple as being teased in your first grade. True. So maybe you've actually grown out of whatever that thing you found insecure mm -hmm. is and it's just stuck with you and you yes. keep hiding it and you're, you know, you're scared of it until mm -hmm. eventually somebody comes up to you and is like, hey, you got to own this. You know, you got to exactly. empower yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it could be something from either like family related mm -hmm. or perhaps the wrong group of friends. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like, trauma from, from childhood. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this could be something that sort of like grows and you sort of like it gets instilled in your brain. Mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Whatever those little kids teased you about. That's the thing. You got to remember that you were kids back then. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But then it's being instilled in your mind that, that that part of your body or that probably could be physical or mental. Mm -hmm. It's that it's not good. It's not good enough. It's not perfect. So it's creating anxiety. For exactly. Exactly. Right. Now that you've gone into that direction, I'd like to also ask like, 
where do we think or where do you guys think insecurities stem from? You've mentioned a few, right. like family, yeah. it could be from childhood, like, mm -hmm. yeah, if you could share as well, where do you, like... Well, I think, like, the number one security today is social media. I think social media mm -hmm. is, super, is such a toxic place. It can be a toxic place depending on what you follow, who you follow. So I think many people set unrealistic standards for themselves because exactly. they see, like, a 15-second snippet of someone's life and believe, like they're not doing enough or they're 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 just not um working hard enough whereas mm -hmm. they don't really get to see what have like that person's background i mean like if you compare yourself to kylie to kylie or the kardashians mm -hmm. then of course you're gonna be thinking like you're not doing <laughs> enough but i mean it's a different situation mm -hmm. that you're dealing with you know so it's incomparable yes i i, I think I, get, I go on quote one time that you can't want somebody's success and not want their struggles as well like yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the you have to want all of it that comes and, with that and person. you know the thing about social media is that mm -hmm. an image is one dimensional it's that yeah. you you do not see the struggle or the stress behind it sometimes some people as well they might have been privileged to sort of lead into great lifestyles so mm -hmm. they have access to property exactly. funding to travel yes or some of them actually started from absolutely nothing mm -hmm. and built their way up right mm -hmm. so that's why i think that images are one-dimensional that's why i think it's really important to sort of follow the right people that are mm -hmm. going to mentor you in, into the right direction mm -hmm. if you are somebody that has high anxiety mm -hmm. and feel that you're not good enough and you're not perfect enough then per perhaps you might want to rethink about following people like kylie jenner exactly. you know, maybe that's not the right mentor for you mm -hmm. so if this is the type of content you're consuming each and every day it's real affect you. it's going <laughs> to affect you even more if mm -hmm. the people around you also try and see a, perceive this image mm -hmm. you know it's like everybody wants to be kylie jenner are they really kylie jenner it's like mm -hmm. are you worth one billion dollars mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's like is your friend worth one billion dollars they're not so it's yeah, like exactly. don't try to compare yourself to them either mm -hmm. so it's like do your own thing you know own own your style own your mm -hmm. your lifestyle that's yeah. That's what you gotta do. From what I'm getting now, like there is there is the factor of comparison. Like I mean, right. social yeah. media and what what not, even like even in real life you can easily see someone and start comparing yourself to that person. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I also think like sometimes it stems from people some people just say the wrong things at the wrong time and it sort of messes with your head. I'll give an example. <laughs> when I was in the university yeah. I had a yeah, roommate I was skinnier than this then. Right, and right, he would right. look at me like, Leila, just apologize for this. He'd be like, dude, you're so thin. <laughs> Wait, and that got, got to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, that you know, got to me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that got to me for years. Uh, yeah. Like, I wouldn't want to wear a short sleeve because I'd be like, oh okay, my God, yeah, people I are can, looking at how big I am. <laughs> But before that, you never felt your bones, Exactly, right? exactly. I wouldn't want to wear a shirt because I'm like, yeah. my legs are so skinny <laughs> and hairy. I don't want people to see. Right. That messed up with my mind for right. a while. Even at some point, I started drinking raw eggs just to grow fat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, <this was> exactly. <laughs> exactly, so it messed up with me. It right. didn't mean it that way, right. but right. it rubbed off on me in a different way. And I yeah. think like, yeah, Truthfully, we really need to be careful with what we say to people because right. it can yeah. mess them up. But what, what if subconsciously you already knew this, but mm -hmm. then what he said sort of triggered? Exactly. Nerve, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like maybe you might feel that, hey, like have you ever asked yourself, it's like, do you think that maybe you're slightly underweight or not? And then, I think so. I so think so. The fact that you actually had to say it, it's like you mm -hmm. pushed the button mm -hmm. and created the anxiety, I which is like so. you're actually not. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it's like. Oh, no, no, then I was. I was right. Risking. No, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you pictures. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to do it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, you're going to put it on. Behind yeah, the scenes. <laughs> Okay, but then what is like the boundary between um, in being insecure about some like criticism like mm -hmm. that and constructive criticism? Like, is it possible that maybe some like maybe in some way you interpret it as something that was maybe like not the most constructive? Mm -hmm. However, like maybe another person would have been like, oh yeah, damn right, you're right, you're right, man. I need to go to the gym. Sure. So it's like. Could it also be a mindset thing of like how you how you like interpret the way people say things? I think so, uh, and how you perceive yourself. Because right. another example is when I started getting bowed, like I quickly accepted it. 
So even till now, if people throw shades at me like, oh, do you need a comb? And I laugh, I'll be like, no, I'll need a comb maybe. Like, I joke around with it as well. But I have accepted it. So it's not an insecurity for me anymore right. in that sense. So I joke around with it as well. But if I was still, if it's something I'm still sort of ashamed of, mm -hmm. then when people throw sh such shades, then it will rub off on me very wrongly as a very negative, what's the word, a criticism of my appearance, mm -hmm. whereas they may just be joking, yeah. right? So I, I think one factor is how the person perceives themselves. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. I, I think the other thing is also just accepting who you are. I know it's such a cliche. <laughs> uh, yeah, Everybody's yeah. going to be like, yeah, you're born this way. It's like, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but really, it's just like, like you said, it's like you accepted that, you know, you have no air mm -hmm. or you both, and it's like you're owning it. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's like when you own it, it also looks dope. So maybe people exactly. are like, shit, I want to have no hair like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's what, like, like Rick Ross. You know? Exactly. Rick Ross made it looking big, look cool. You know? Exactly. Like, exactly. Like, yeah. Here's a fun fact about me is when mm -hmm. I was a kid, I was, I was actually really fat. I was like really short and chubby. And I was really I to see throwbacks. <laughs> yeah, I was a huge throwback. <laughs> yeah, I was 12, 13, about 12, 13, and I was like a pretty fat, chick chubby kid. Mm -hmm. So I was very insecure about my body mm -hmm. at that age because a lot of my classmates were a lot taller than me. I was like the third shortest. Mm -hmm. I've, I've obviously grown out of that, but um, I always wanted to have the body they had because mm -hmm. they were fit, athletic, and then in my mm -hmm. mind I was like, I'm not this perfect kid. Right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, instead of like sort of feeling bad for myself, what I ended up doing is that I started playing more sports. Um, mm -hmm. I started trying to eat healthy at a very young mm -hmm. age and eventually I started working on myself. Mm -hmm. and so now these insecurities, I, and the best part is like, you know, I started growing. Yeah. So between 14, 15, 16, mm -hmm. I, I hit a growth spurt. Mm -hmm. And ever since I started, I told myself that I did not want to look the way I looked, and that's actually why I work out mm -hmm. quite a lot. So it stems from that. Mm -hmm. It's because I know what I looked like, I know what it felt like, and I'm trying to make the best out of myself. Sure. So it's basically, it's like I made a decision to transform how I look. Mm -hmm. There's certain insecurities that you just can't change, mm -hmm. but then it's like, there's sometimes where it's like, all right, you might want to think of how you can actually change it. Mm -hmm. There are things that you can actually do Absolutely. to improve, yeah. right? Yeah. So concerning like um, certain insecurity, what you mentioned, certain insecurities that you can't change, can you give some example? Because um, at this point, I was also thinking, are there insecurities that we can't actually change? But I couldn't come up with any. Like, can you think of anyone? Because I feel like, for instance, I came up with, oh, if my nose is not nice, uh, maybe I can't change it, but I could actually save up and do a nose job. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> so right. that's one part to, to solve that is good. Right. It's not like yeah. a, an ideal solution, right? right. But yeah. that's one way to deal with it. But um, yeah, I was thinking, is there anyone that we can't really change? I haven't thought of someone sitting on a wheelchair and right. all, but they can save up and get prosthetics. But yet again, it's like there's, there's two types, right? So mm -hmm. we're talking yeah. physical, yeah. mental. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like there's physical insecurities and there's probably mental insecurities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mental insecurity could be like the way you laugh. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe some people don't like or the way they voice. speak. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or your voice. Yeah. Or I've heard of people who are like insecure, especially like let's say for example with men, if mm -hmm. they have like a um, higher pitched voice, then that could maybe be an insecurity. <laughs> yeah. However, we also see comedians who use that as like one of their um, securities or like yeah. that's something that everyone yeah. knows them for you know so that's actually a very good example mm -hmm. so so it's like you know people that have overcome that so it's like mm -hmm. hey I got this high-pitched voice right let me put it to use <laughs> let me put it to use and make Start people laugh. Um, <laughs> and so that's the other thing the other the other mental one could be maybe some people like twitch when they speak I've heard of people ah yeah that makes right. sense right mm, so it's like I guess that's like, yeah, I guess it's so just... So these are things that I guess you're born with, and mm -hmm. you know, the little things that you can't change, these are like yeah. some of the insecurities that perhaps, I don't even want to call them insecurities, I just like to call them... Um, differences. Yeah, differences, mm -hmm. like, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there is nothing wrong with it, right? until maybe like, 
um, you start seeing things differently and then you start rubbing off on you the wrong way. Yeah. So yeah, the, the example of the switching makes so much sense because like sometimes there is probably no solution, if I'm correct, and yeah, yeah you just have to live with it and accept, accept I, it. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. I think it's the acceptance part. I, I, and there's one thing too, I, I would need you guys to help me with this one. I also think sometimes like insecurities can stem even from the person themselves in a way, for example, being competitive has its good side and could actually be coming from a place of insecurity. Uh, maybe this, the person doesn't feel like they do enough. So they, if they see someone doing better than them, um, there's a place of admiring and wanting to do that, but there's a place of being competitive to the extent where they want the attention that person has for themselves. Or for example, showing off, showing off some things, showing off, you know, like I've got this, I've got this. It could also stem from insecurity because Really, you don't really need to do that. But yeah, yeah so is could we say this insecurity comes from the person themselves or um, yeah, I'm trying to place it. Does it come from the person themselves or it comes yeah. from some event in their life or something that makes I, them I'm want gonna to go do with events in their life. I think mm -hmm. yeah, childhood trauma usually when yeah. it comes to like something like competitiveness. Mm -hmm. Maybe the child was fighting for their parents' attention, so they feel yeah. this pressure to always be There's always a the older star, sibling you know? or another mm -hmm. sibling involved in that. One. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> <a> favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay. I don't know. I, I would say a lot of actually a lot of them stem from childhood trauma or childhood something events. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. That makes sense. That makes sense. I also think like I wouldn't want us to drop this one out. Like financial insecurity as well. I think like right. people who who are. Financially insecure, let's say at some point in their life they were broke, they were insecure about it. Then at some point they started getting some money, then they want to show off. Yeah, they want to show up yeah. like, oh, life is good for me, you know, show off their things. I think yeah. it could, it's a good example of insecurity as well. That, is, so. that, that is a strong one. I, mm -hmm. I think it, it's more common amongst men where. Yeah, yeah I agree where they, 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 when they were in a position of hardship mm -hmm. where they're struggling to get by, as soon as they get that real paycheck, you know, then they want to show it off. Body! <laughs> Which is such a bad thing to do. Um, so it's like just getting a taste of that, that mm -hmm. lifestyle, that little bit of money, and then trying to show everybody that they got it. True. Right? So that, that already shows the insecurity that they weren't wanted to live that really nice lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Well, they were trying to impress people that sort mm -hmm. of like ditched them, mm -hmm. right? True. And now it's like that they got it. They're trying to also perceive this really good lifestyle, exactly. which also look, so a lot of people on Instagram are doing. Like a lot of guys on Instagram do that. Yeah. I can't um, agree less. <laughs> <laughs> you That's know? so true. That's like, true. you don't know how many people are going super broke just mm -hmm. to have a really cool Instagram. A, yeah, just have That's this credit image. Card. Oh, I'm <laughs> don't know. So it's like it's like guys don't do it. It's not worth it. <laughs> so it's not worth it. Like we've been able to talk about like insecurity where it right. stems from and stuff, right? I'd like to know your take on. Do you think we can ever, um, maybe till we die, be without insecurities? Like none at all. Yeah, like, no, at all. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, we're human. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, think, I think at the end of the day, we're human. There's always going to be something. Yeah. Like, somehow, some way. It, it could be really anything, you know? It's like, you just look, like you mentioned, it mm -hmm. could be someone else's success. Exactly. Or someone else's beauty. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's emotion, right? Yeah. So the emotional side of us, there's always going to be that little bit of conflict. The, the important thing is how do you deal with it as a person? Yeah, yeah, that's right. True. So it's yeah. like, it's like if someone else is doing real, like mm -hmm. really well, for example, mm -hmm. then you accept it and you actually look up to him and see what he's been doing rather than hating. Yeah, right? if you hate him, there's nothing nice about hating. Yeah, right. So mm -hmm. it's like, or you want to be competitive. Look what he did and try to do it better. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like. But, but one thing you shouldn't do is hate. <laughs> but I think it's also that thing of like how, you know when there's that saying where the more you have, the more you want. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's say for example, you've overcome, let's say you gave the example of the nose. Mm -hmm. You overcame that insecurity by having doing that nose job. 
but then you're gonna find something else that you're like oh i also hate this in my body <laughs> let me just go and do this mm -hmm. and then well like 20 operations later you come back uh, looking you quite look <laughs> 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 <Not to> yourself <laughs> <laughs> like a different person <laughs> altogether you know and you'll still find something to operate yeah, on you know it's true. it's just you, like, like hey this eyelash is a weird thing over here i'm not really like true and i gotta hey, yeah. you gotta do something <laughs> So I think sure, like I, I agree with that. I mean, you end up looking like a zombie. Exactly. Man. I mean, it can be anything, and I think it's like, like Kimal said, it's just normal or human to always want to change something. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. With it's and I and I think yeah. you gotta be so cautious about that. I would say that that we really cannot be without insecurities, right? Uh, what do you think are the pros and cons of insecurities? Like, because I think no matter as as bad as it seems, there is still some maybe little advantage to having insecurities, right? Right. So, what do you guys think? Are there pros and cons? Yeah, like, like I would say that um, with the pros, I would think that insecurities has pushed people far beyond their their capabilities. Mm, okay. So, underachievement, you know. Um, I'm not sure if that's an insecurity. <laughs> uh, I think it can, can fall into the category. Yeah, so, I think so. <laughs> if unachievement is an insecurity, then mm -hmm. for some people, it's actually pushed them far beyond their boundaries and have actually produced the world or given the world with some amazing things. Mm -hmm. right? So maybe perhaps this is why the world has been created this way, why we have some people that look perfect and some people that aren't very perfect. Mm -hmm. and maybe this, this is actually something that we need, that this, this part of us where it's like pushes people beyond mm -hmm. their their capabilities and mm -hmm. then offering the world or offering society something yeah in return mm -hmm. so that's that could be the pros to it mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and then the cons is probably the the reverse effect yeah where yeah. not doing anything about it and mm -hmm. self-doubting going through complete anxiety um taking the the wrong route mm -hmm. i think also like with the cons like often the, like a bully for example in school mm -hmm. often the bully is usually the person who has a deep insecurity right. that needs to yeah. service and that's why he he like gets pleasure from actually putting other people down not because mm -hmm. he's really like a terrible person but more often so because like he's insecure or terribly insecure about something I'm in terrified. his own life mm -hmm. yeah. so it's like that could be a con because you know you could use this as a destructive way to put other people down and i think that's one of the worst ways to use your insecurity yeah um, right to like put it off on someone else yeah and i think some people are really not even aware about their insecurities so yeah. they just act as they right. feel mm. and right. yeah i i think th there has to be a balance Sure. Uh, that's where the pros and cons come from. But that's right. what I'm saying. It's mm. like you think of the bully that is talking about. Mm. Imagine the bully that came to you sometime, or it could be anybody, and mm. they started bullying people based on their own insecurities. Mm. They don't want to see them succeed, right? Mm. So maybe it creates a burning sensation and the person being bullied mm -hmm. to better themselves. Mm. True. So the times where you actually get positive reactions. That's why. It's like coaching, right? There's mm -hmm. certain type of people that require criticism mm -hmm. to do better, yeah. while there are other people that need a pat on the back. Yeah. So very good example. So <laughs> it's like if a bully mm -hmm. comes to a person that requires critique, mm -hmm. then it might build this burning sensation, and they end mm -hmm. up being very yeah, successful exactly. people mm -hmm. because that bully was like constantly in the back of his mind. Yes. Every day he was grinding or trying to better himself because mm -hmm. of what that person did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you get the other people in reverse, where it's like that person really put them really down mm -hmm. where it gets to the point where they where they might even need a psychologist because mm -hmm. it's like some sort of trauma that they haven't gotten over when you have the same experience as different effects on people yeah. yes yeah. it's crazy i think like it's i mean like he said the mm -hmm. pro of like you know maybe having an insecurity is rising up and becoming the best at whatever i mean like i've seen some amazing videos of um, people with disabilities that often people would uh, see as like incapable of yeah. playing some sports yes. and then they just end up becoming so strong because their body composition like their muscle composition becomes stronger in other places mm -hmm. and like they just become that amazing athlete of the sport mm -hmm. so it's like I think that also comes down to your mental 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 strength and how mm -hmm. how 
maybe also it's like the people around you like if you have positive people around you who are mm -hmm. cheering you on all the way so it also comes down to who you're surrounding yourself with like if you surround yourself with terrible people then of course your insecurity will just will come up more. Yeah. yeah i i think i agree to that i agree so like from your own personal experience how have you been able to overcome you can give an example of the insecurity you're able to overcome how were you able to like overcome you've given one about your weight right so <laughs> from your own personal experience and you also told us how like right. i think i'll praise leila now right so how were you able to overcome it whatever insecurity it was <laughs> I'm trying to hear this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. I think <laughs> I think sometimes you actually don't like when someone said like sometimes you don't even realize you have the security until yes. it pops up and you sit with yourself and you think like why do I keep doing this every time I see this sort of situation happen mm -hmm. in my life and that's when you actually start hitting it starts hitting you like okay this is actually something I'm not like i'm actually insecure about so mm -hmm. it's like for me personally like i i watch like or listen to uh, some motivational mm -hmm. <laughs> podcasts mm -hmm. uh Kimon I mean, knows. it works for you why not <laughs> it does but mm -hmm. it yeah, can it also does. i'm not gonna lie it gets toxic to a certain extent mm -hmm. like i think it also puts immense pressure on you if you listen to this every single day mm, okay. and uh thankfully kimal actually did tell me like listen you need to stop like <laughs> yeah there was there was a period when my sister was staying with me during mm -hmm. like the, the covid period mm -hmm. and i would see later literally like listening to these mental talks mm -hmm. or whatever and i'm just like yo dude you gotta chill with that, <laughs> because it's like here's the thing right mm -hmm. it's like if you listen every day to one person mm -hmm. telling you how to live your life, then it's it's gonna sort of transform you as a person. I when whenever I look into something, I like getting information from multiple sources. Mm -hmm. Right? You if if that guy said something, it's always good to question what everybody says, even though it might sound right to you. Yeah, yeah. So if Leila was listening to this guy talk every single day. I'm not saying that what he's saying is <laughs> shit. I haven't listened to it. But I'm just saying it's like it's like change it up. It's like don't listen every single day to the same thing because then you're gonna end up being a robot. Mm. You know, and then it's like you're gonna your life is gonna be like this where you're doing everything according to what, so what that person saying. Yeah, so that's why I didn't like seeing her listen to that. And mm -hmm. I was like, hey look, diversify your portfolio with whatever you're listening to. <laughs> I mean like to be fair, to be fair, like, you know, you. I think yeah. I definitely I took some really constructive things from him. Mm -hmm. Of course like taking right. a actually like I've stopped listening to him now. Mm -hmm. But I think like I took the information I needed from him. So it's like helped me move on from where I was then, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I think it just like yeah, it's like important, like you all said, is to diversify. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. really good to listen to different listen people. to different people, yeah. different um, read cultures, different books, people uh -huh. from different backgrounds, yeah. from rich, from poor, from mm -hmm. from humble places, from maybe even abusive yeah. places. I think you it know? comes from the balance. Try to create the balance. That's yeah. important. Exactly. Have, have very balanced perception of life. Mm -hmm. Like so, from what I'm understanding, right? So. In the case of um, you know Leila having to deal with the insecurity, then she was right. she spoke with herself, which I think is really important. Like really sitting down with yourself and like evaluating your actions, mm. right? And then you found something that helps you. I think one thing I've also learned is even in the case of seeking help, mm. um, try to create a balance with yeah. the help you're seeking. And yeah. there is one thing I I was wanted to say when you were talking, right? I was thinking that. It, could this be an insecurity as well with people who want to please others? An insecurity in the sense of how them not wanting people to see them as bad or wanting people to perceive them as a certain image, right? So yeah. they would want to please, you know, want to do things to like please people. Say yes to everything. Yes, <laughs> saying yes to yeah. Now, the thing is, it's, it's hard to really come into the realization that this may actually right. be a bad thing yeah. Uh, yeah. and you know try to I, I was in that space to like I would right. say yes well, yeah sure I didn't actually know what I was doing until you were yes. yeah but I was just saying yes I would get a bit stressed it's, out it's, I would get bored fear, out fear of being rejected exactly right yeah. I think yeah and the and the idea of being liked by everybody right, right. so 
it was both of them combined and it was at some point that you know like people were just always saying ah he'll do it oh, yeah yeah, he'll agree to yeah it. exactly right. you'll yeah. do it ah you do it just try to switch that's the thing that it becomes like <laughs> yeah. the expected norm that exactly. you are the person that's mm -hmm. just going to agree to everything exactly. that's so true so, uh, yeah uh, mm -hmm. you know the way the way i handle these things is that if there's something that i am not comfortable doing mm -hmm. then instead of giving a direct no for example, if you're trying to be polite, mm -hmm. of course you don't want to like sway around it mm -hmm. because then it's like the other person also won't know where you stand. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's nice to just say, hey, look, I'm not I'm not really keen to do this mm -hmm. because um, one, two, three, but then have valid reasons why, perhaps. Yeah. Or maybe these are some ways you can sort of build on it. Mm -hmm. And saying no to certain things will actually make you feel good. Yeah. yeah. It it means <laughs> talking about like how we go over insecurities right for me personally i spoke about my skin itself mm. right and i think one of that insecurity i struggled with at some point in my life was uh, me feeling as if i wasn't good enough like because i was seeing my friends and um, you know yeah. doing things that i would want to do so i was of course trying to learn and you know get there trying not to be what's the word jealous mm. but right. at some point it got done on me i'm like dude you're not you're not good enough like but what helped me was I then looked back at I spoke with um, someone as mm. well. I then looked back at my previous um, achievements. Yeah. Because yeah, this was the problem. I was feeling as if I wasn't intelligent or smart enough. Then I looked back at my previous achievement, like, dude, you did this, you did this, you did this, you did this. Right. Damn, mm. you smart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you know, just, just to encourage yeah. myself that. Yeah. And you, you gotta own that. Yeah. Right? Like, There's nothing wrong about. Bro. <laughs> Feeling that's exactly that's how you build confidence, exactly. Right? Like, so it's yeah. like you gotta own that, Bro, like, hey, I'm the shit, yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, <laughs> and it also comes down to like who are you comparing yourself to because, like, often we're comparing ourselves to like two people maximum, mm -hmm. and then like we're like, oh, everyone is so much better than exactly. me, exactly. But you're already in that top tier, you're mm -hmm. already doing so much more than most of the people exactly. around you. But of course, it's also maybe a constructive thing to focus on mm -hmm. people who are like maybe building you up in the mm -hmm. sense that like i i need to be better than that mm -hmm. in a positive way yes. i think yes so I, I guess like yeah maybe focusing your attention on being better than the people who are better than you mm -hmm. will improve yourself that's what i was yes. saying we're going yes. all the way back to the pros exactly yeah. right so pros it's like yeah. it's, mm, that sort of pushed you yes it pushed me yeah. and it made me realize dude you just need to take it one step after the other you can understand yeah. this you've got exactly. this people like you who are constantly thinking that they they haven't done anything or they haven't felt any sense of achievement mm -hmm. but they constantly be doing things mm -hmm. yeah. Th there's times where you actually got to take a step back and map out everything that you've done in your life yeah and then and then actually be proud of yourself exactly yeah. right exactly. like because this is you this is your achievement this is mm -hmm. not kanye's achievement exactly not <laughs> that person's achievement. this is your achievement yes. so it's mm -hmm. like Sometimes you gotta do that. Yeah, and exactly. You gotta feel good about it. That's mm -hmm. how you also sure. build your confidence. Exactly. Right. Sure. Exactly. So, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I think like even like in this, it's in this case like maybe once you actually achieve the thing you aspire to achieve this year or whatever, mm -hmm. when you achieve it, I think it's also important to acknowledge that like. Damn Sam, I managed I to this. achieve this this year <laughs> as I want to. Look at this <laughs> you know? So we've been able to share our insecurities, right? And and now we're able to deal with them. So what advice do would you give to the viewers if they have some sort of insecurities they are dealing with, how can they um, you know, help themselves or how can they seek help? Uh, you know? I, I I mean the first thing first, right? I think Look, there's no right answer. We're not we're not professors. Yes, well, sure. <laughs> I'm not a professor. <laughs> uh, well, first things first. Um, it was we talked about self reflection. Mm -hmm. So, taking a step back, trying to figure out who you are as a person, mm -hmm. and trying to understand why you're insecure. It's a very hard thing, but you got to be very real with yourself. You need to sit yes. down with yourself and actually say, "This is why I'm insecure." And you got to take a number of things into consideration. Family, friends, the group, the environment, because these are usually the things that yeah. cause these, these type of problems. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if it's the friends, if, if you are a yes person, saying yes to everything and certain things are just not making you feel mm -hmm. comfortable, um, it's time that you actually draw the line and start saying no. Right? Uh, you got to respect yourself, because once you respect yourself, people respect you. The other thing is, 
are there certain things that you can overcome? So it could be a weakness in something, it could be perhaps you're not very happy with your image. So there's two things to that one. It's like maybe it's time that you start working on yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you, are if you do not want to change that side of you, then you need to start accepting who you are, mm -hmm. right? So it's like there's no right answer. So yeah. it's like if you are slightly overweight and you think that you'd like a better figure, then you'd obviously need to start thinking about your diet and maybe start getting some physical exercise into mm -hmm. your lifestyle. But if you're someone that's overweight and you do not want to do that and you're insecure about it, then you need to start owning yeah. being overweight, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Vice versa, if you're skinny, it's the same thing. So yeah. you need to take ownership of who you are and accept it. Yeah. Sure. Feel good about it, you know, make yourself who you are mm -hmm. and grow from that. That's that's my advice. Yeah. yeah, I think like you you basically put the whole cake together, but to put the cherry on top. <laughs> um, you can like definitely, I think like it's really important because we spoke about how you can mess people around you up as well. So mm -hmm. like, I think it's really important to to avoid and to not do that or to not put mm -hmm. other people down because I think that's really just a way to um, to just create a worse society overall because I think um, we can we can really like create a better society by helping each other and by being nice right. so always just choose being a nice person mm -hmm. and of course like it's okay to be insecure it's like really normal to be insecure we Everybody all have is. it Everybody everyone is insecure it. Yeah. in some way or another it's, even, we all even deal Kylie with is not insecure we deal with it in different ways everybody deals with it in different exactly. ways same with us it's like there's nothing there's certain situations that you might not be secure of but then at yes. the same time you, you, you tell yourself it's like ah and, you know, just, go. just go with the flow. It's like sometimes at work, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. Don't always take yourself too seriously. You know, sure. um, the more you do that, then the more people are just going to be comfortable with, with whatever you're dealing with. So, yeah. Yeah. so it's like learn to love yourself, learn to laugh at yourself. Really? That's another thing. Learn to yeah. laugh at yourself. Yes. I yeah. do some dumb shit sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yo, Kimo, you dumb as shit. Don't take life too serious. Like, life is all about yeah. enjoying it. Just, I mean, just you have one don't. life, honestly. And it's yeah. like, also, I think it's so important to choose your battles. Like, literally, you, you, you have an encounter with so many people on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. If you choose to really take in every single person's remark on you, you'll never be able to accept yourself. So, sure. that is honestly, yeah. take, take criticism from people who are really close to you and people who want you to grow, not mm -hmm. people who want you to fail. So, and you can feel it. For sure. Mm -hmm. you Sometimes exactly if you ask me are. the question, is like, how do I know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can feel it. If, if there's something positive that you're trying to do with your, with your life, if you're mm -hmm. maybe trying to, to, you know, go through some sort of self-development mm -hmm. and somebody's like, nah, that's a waste of time, don't, don't bother, it's like, nah, you'll never ever be able to do that, mm -hmm. then you'd be like, hey, get the f*** out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> And you go meet people that are actually trying to to self improve their lives. Yeah. The more you actually find these type of people, yeah. the more your life is going to improve. Sure. And trust yeah. me, there's many of them all over the place. Yeah. Uh, fortunate enough to like travel. That's that's a thing. Try to get out of your environment if you can. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You end up meeting these people. Don't be shy. Like you know, chat with people you've never spoken to. Yeah. Um, these are the little things I'd like to call them mm -hmm. minimal attainable goals mm -hmm. Where it's like do the very bare minimum if you see yourself wanting to get up to here It's like what is the very bare minimal thing you that you can do yeah. right now mm -hmm. to sort of change that It could mm -hmm. be as simple as going to a cafe and just randomly saying hey my name is so-and-so and it's like I think you're quite interesting It's exactly. like I'm trying to change my personality <laughs> exactly, you know, it's, yeah. there's nothing wrong with it I'll just I'll just add to that like if you're insecure about whatever it is if you feel like or you can't sit down with yourself and have the self-reflection with yourself then you can always talk to someone right yeah. you know, like someone you trust obviously someone you know like wants your best interest at heart and yeah. you know speak with the person and let right. them understand what you're going through maybe the person might even help you see oh you say yeah for example, if I'm telling someone, I'm telling Leila, Leila, I need to care about my bow head. Mm -hmm. And she's like, really? A lot of people complimented your bow head. You know, that yeah. would improve yeah. your view of yourself. Knowing sure. that 
it's just all up in your head, right? Yeah. So you just never know what people are thinking about you. Sharing ideas, communicating, Definitely. and being Definitely. open to like always like open open to conversation about things like this. I think often people want to have quite superficial conversation, yeah. but it's these things that are the important things that people should be speaking yeah. about, you know? Yeah. So I think like that's don't be scared to bring these topics to the table. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why it's cool meeting new people because yeah, it's like yeah. a person that has no sort of information about your past. Yes. Could, yeah. could, could give you the best sort of advice, exactly. you know. They could be very honest. It's mm -hmm. like if if you just randomly chat with a bunch of people you've just met and it's mm -hmm. like you might have the best conversation exactly. in life, right? That's exactly. so true. So it's like there's some people like they could be your closest friends mm -hmm. or your your family. They've known you for your entire life. There mm -hmm. might be some sort of biases. Yes. Uh, yes. Or maybe something mm -hmm. that as a kid you weren't very good at mm -hmm. and then you've become very good at it but then now the people know that you weren't good at it because they remember it from you yes. as a child yes. yeah right and then it's like they might not give you the best advice mm -hmm. anymore. yes i agree yeah. i think speaking about this i think that's been the best part about leaving like home and like traveling out and literally starting afresh in some way i think we're all all of us in the room are expats. Yeah. We're all here mm -hmm. in a different foreign country. We mm -hmm. we started from zero basically, mm -hmm. and I think in some way that's like the best development because you start to relearn. You start to learn yourself again. To be honest, like True. it's a different sort of learning right. that you like you face mm -hmm. when you're like out into a new society with people you don't know. I think mm -hmm. like when we first left, the first realization that I had, I was like. I can literally be whoever I want to be. Not that I changed much, but you know, just that idea that like, wow, like it's a completely fresh start. Like yes. no one knows me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think um, being able to, you know, have this new encounter, being able to meet people afresh without any like biases from the past mm -hmm. really makes a difference. Yes. And that's why I think it's really good mm -hmm. to always like, be open to speaking to new people. Don't mm -hmm. just hang around like the people you've been friends with your whole yeah, life. You try know? to get out of all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. True. I'm not saying you should forget them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are people in our lives. You know, we yeah, still got, yeah, yeah, I still yeah. got some amazing friends from yeah. home and are sharing mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Keep in touch. But it's always good to just get fresh person's mm -hmm. perspectives. Yeah. True. True. Well, thank you guys very much for your like contributions because I've learned something. I hope um, you were able to learn something. I hope this video was like helpful for you in a way if you have more questions you can always um write into the comment section or you can reach out to me on any of my social media platforms there's facebook listed in the description there's instagram you can always reach out and i also drop their their handles as well their instagram handles so you can reach out to them if you want once again this is kemal this is Layla joining me on codeversation thank you guys thank you so much <laughs> also listening. if you if we forgot to mention something be sure to put it down in the comments we're always happy to learn from other people as well yes. all right yes. exactly this yes. is this is how life should be right exactly. like you should all listen from each other exactly yeah. exactly okay. and if you're yet to subscribe to this channel oh i don't know what you're doing please subscribe there is always good news coming out of this channel please subscribe <laughs> share and like the video you know like and share with as much as possible um people who you think may need this as well if you're shy to tell them just send them the link hey i saw this Facebook <laughs> on it. just send it to them it's really be nice and um all these conversations are part of what i, I really like these conversations because uh you know one thing it's i always say like, is yeah one thing i always say is keep your soul beautiful i I think these conversations help to like nourish our souls to keep our soul beautiful. Exactly. So That's thank awesome. you guys for like joining thank you me. So you much, to say Sam. something? Thanks, thanks no, for thank you so much for having us. We're so happy and we're happy yeah. to have been here. It was this so awesome. great. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining me. And um thank you viewers for watching as well. Until next time, make sure you keep your soul beautiful. Yeah. Bye guys. Peace out, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.